Soon I'll be able to read your thoughts! But apparently not in the next few minutes, so you got off lucky. Anthony here for D News, and researchers at the Stanford University School of Medicine just figured out how to read signals from the brain to find out when people are thinking of the right answers to simple math problems in their heads. There is a part of the brain called the intraparietal sulcus. It's a crucial bit for attention and hand-eye motion. Previous studies pointed to it being useful in numerosity, which is like literacy, but for math. Uh, using a technique called intracranial recording allowed the researchers to monitor subjects as they sat at a laptop answering true or false questions and questions that required simple calculations, like does 2 plus 2 equal 5, and recorded the intraparietal sulcus's activity. Then they looked at the data and they were able to pinpoint when the patient was thinking about a math question, not just doing calculations, but thinking about quantitative stuff like many or this is more than. And the intraparietal sulcus did not fire during any other thoughts, leading the researchers to believe that a lot of specific types of thought could be traced to very specific parts of the brain. Okay, so not quite reading someone's innermost secrets, and it's not exactly something that can be done easily either. Intracranial recordings two-step installation process begins with remove a portion of the skull and ends with place electrodes against exposed parts of the brain. But it's a very important first step and a potentially very useful one. The more we can pinpoint types of thought to different parts of the brain, the closer we get to actual thought reading. And just in this simple state, a patient suffering from limited ability to speak due to stroke or paralysis could potentially communicate their needs to a medical staff or to loved ones using intracranial recording. So, baby step, but big step. Big baby step. We've seen a few of those lately. Earlier this year, Cornell used an fMRI to do a similar experiment. They gave their subjects details about the personality traits of four imaginary people and monitored the brain activity the descriptions caused. And then they asked each subject to imagine having a conversation with any of the four people at random. And they could accurately predict which imaginary friend they were thinking about every time just based on patterns of activity in the prefrontal cortex. And just this month, Chicago University researchers were able to attach a robotic arm to rhesus monkeys that actually sent signals back to their brains to simulate a sense of touch. Two-way brain communication is becoming a thing here, people. It is amazing and creepy. It is creep amazing. I'll work on that term. I'll put one of those chips in my head, but only if they promise I can firewall my dirty thoughts. What do you think? Is mind reading going to happen in our lifetime? Are you cool with it? Let me know, telepathically. But also in the comments, just in case I don't receive you. And subscribe for more D News.